I wait to speak about this topic because I just saw it now on my flipping socials. Um, the one and only, the great, the powerful Georgia Smith has come out and had a very interesting thing to share, right? She shared this with courtesy of the Shade Borough, which is Georgia Smith is moving back home to escape trolls. The headline is a little bit inflammatory because I'm sure that's not the only reason why she's going back home. But allegedly, Georgia Smith is moving back home because of the trolls. And the issue, uh, I think it has to do with Porter Magazine as well. The cover issue, so I'm going to read the article and kind of react to it in real time. Because I've obviously made a clip on this channel talking about her myself on my pod regarding the whole weight gain thing. My main issue wasn't that she got fat. I don't really give a fuck, do you know what I mean? Um, but I found it really odd on social media that there was a resistance and a reluctance and a refusal to just say what we saw on camera like all of us are the same myself included i gained a ton of weight during the pandemic that i never had pre-pandemic it just is what it is some of us some of us our bodies have changed during that time some of us have been able to lose it some of us haven't it just is what it is but i was really perplexed why some people on social media were unable to just say yes she's still a beautiful girl incredibly attractive woman but she's clearly bigger than what she used to be like there was a refusal to talk about that and i don't know if it's just like a social media thing there's a resistance online which is probably a smart thing to do because probably people on social don't really know how to talk about things in a grown-up nuanced um mature way so maybe this resistance people have to comment on women's bodies is a good thing but i just think the refusal to just say what you see with your naked eye is also a little bit insane you know i don't know where we are in culture where we can't just like say oh this guy's fat that guy's skinny like it's just not a, it's not even a judgment it's just actually what you're seeing with your eyes so that's the one thing i didn't really understand about it but then i was also thinking to myself like her career has been interesting in it because she had the world in her hands she was literally destined for greatness and something just didn't click and for me i think personally overall maybe you have to look at the weight gain differently than some people would look at it some people look at it and see it as like a quote-unquote depression thing but how about if it's just her accepting her position or her place in culture where she is as an artist i can kind of do what she wants she doesn't really have the i think the pressure that she maybe had before of trying to be this big pop star girl she's kind of carved her own lane she's got a dedicated fan base she's now experimenting which i'm more happy about because i feel like her sound has just been lacking something but that remix i saw her do with Nia archives was oh so good i'd love to hear like a drum and bass jungle inspired entire tape from her in some way shape or form it'd be so good right from oh, who this guy is is it conductor these like new gen like uk grime guys who are making nice new generation modern day um, garage i would love to hear that from her but it doesn't necessarily happen so i wonder if that whole weight gain thing is less about depression and more so her just being comfortable in her own skin and being okay with being outside because I, I think at a certain point people have to realize maybe i think so if you're a star at a certain level there comes different pressures with having to present yourself a certain way you have to look a certain way you have to act a certain way and those are things that are hard to maintain over a long period of time so maybe she's just not into wanting to do what pop stars have to do to maintain their level of pop star then which i'm assuming is look after your looks in a certain way and she's more comfortable just being the way she is which is perfectly fine um but again i feel like the refusal to accept what you see in front of you is a bit strange anyway let's read a couple comments i see tweets complaining about georgia, georgia smith has gained weight i don't think they're complaining they're just commenting on it I don't, again i don't i don't know the language you use on social is odd um then i stepped outside and looked at the sky it was still blue i touched the ground it hadn't crumbled i opened the tap and the water was clear instead of being blood the world did not end because she gained weight of course it didn't but it also is an insult to everybody's intelligence and eyes not to admit when it did actually happen but again who cares i guess another tweet from somebody says people talk about georgia smith's weight gain are weird as fuck of course she won't have the same body as when she was 19 it's normal for girls in their mid-20s to go through their womanly body phase grow up okay fair play maybe that's the case also but i'm interested to see or to find out what has led to her basically being i wouldn't say a recluse but she definitely has kind of stepped away from the limelight a lot and it's been interesting to witness because, like I said, she had the world at her feet, destined for to take over the world, um, and then something happened. And usually, I feel like it's either the industry decides you're not that person or you decide. Those are usually the two only options on the table. Like, you, you decide, you know, whether you consciously or not, 
or the industry says no you're not that person so i want to see what the deal is here so let's see this is courtesy of porter magazine um her own way she looks incredible here in this flipping editorial so let's watch and see what she had to say here. she says don't give yourself too much pressure she says um it's a tricky one it's important what you think is right it's important to do what you think is right okay cool so basically it sounds like she got into the music industry find out very quickly it's not all you know not everything that glitters is gold and is now trying to make sure that she carves her own lane in the way that she wants to do it props i give her respect for that she's only 26 fuck man she's been around forever in it fucking hell man own at again but you, you never know musicians and artists and stuff there's a lot of like that finagling of ages but she does look quite young anyway but people do like to lie about their age in the entertainment industry but she's only 26 bro shit at 26 she was just released a second album um falling or flying and um, she's been making music professionally for seven years beginning with a self uh, released black uh, blue lights has anybody listened to her new album does anybody give a shit about georgia smith in the chat um she is a uh, what you call it um one of the earliest videos that exist of her on the internet is a cover of Mi of on a mission by keb back in 2011 she was around 14 in her school uniform and accompanied by a friend on the guitar but her voice already carries a signature rounded quality that's made her um in the top 40s you see her there looking good in the model shoot there right on the right on the left so big up her uh flying or falling spun um, from a homegrown pride and newfound maturity mostly produced by a female jury called um duo called dame dame the tracks thump sashay and glide around in genres um familiar to smith such as r&b jazz and pop but with the base of confidence in her previous work um indeed her relationship to the album is tied intrinsically to a stage um of smith's life a time when she's figuring out what she wanted coming into her womanhood and presumably moving away from the former loves this is heartbreak this is, uh, there is heartbreak pain stamped all over the same tracks did you listen to me before she asks turning to me suddenly before this album um so yeah as i've grown i've grown and she says shyly do you hear it the growth da -da 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 um it says here the reason i'm asking is that one of my friends wasn't a super fan oh wow i, lo I love that she's got friends that aren't actually fans of her music that's how it should be as an artist you should have fans you should have friends in your social group who are able to give you objective opinions on your work they shouldn't all be sycophants i think personally but that's pretty cool to see um, reason i'm asking is that one of my friends wasn't a proper fan but i played her falling or flying and she said it's just so relatable i get what you're saying she gives a small smile it gives me goosebumps speaking about it i think with this album i've experienced more it's coming from my heart rather than my imagination again she looks fucking fantastic in these photos though she can take a fucking good picture in it she's very photogenic very very good looking lady and just looks good in clothes in general i'm surprised she hasn't done runway stuff or more editorial she looks really fucking good you know big up um georgia what's she wearing there what, what is that coat the coat is by totem the jumpsuits by norma khalid shoes by Givenchy. Yeah, she looks fucking good in this outfit. At the beginning of 2023, Sue decided to move from London, where she lived since she was a teenager, back to Warsaw, where she was born. She still travels to London regularly and will soon start a tour, but she's been basking in the comfort of familiarity and introversion these past few months. Have you guys seen this, by the way? Have you guys seen this? Uh, There's a trend happening in London or in the UK a lot. A lot of my friends, a lot of people I've kind of grown up with, who maybe were from London or came to London to study, are now deciding to move to other smaller cities outside of London, whether it's in the Midlands, whether it's in the North, whether it's in other parts of, you know, Scotland and shit and Ireland. A lot of people are deciding that the big city isn't really for them anymore. They'd rather maybe if they live, if they have a family that lives on the outskirts and like Essex and shit, they'd rather go there. Is that happening a lot in places that you're at? That people aren't necessarily wanting to live in the big cities. They're like, you know what? I don't actually mind moving back closer to my family and living maybe there and getting a place that's cheaper or something. Is that something you're seeing? Because a lot of my friends are starting to do the same thing. They're not really the myth or the mystique of living in a big city isn't what it used to be once before. People aren't that, you know, they don't really give a fuck, you know? They're kind of wanting to go back home and kind of get grounded with their roots and be around their people. There's something to that. Um this encapsulates sorry, this is encapsulated by a song Smith wrote titled Greatest Gift. You're the greatest gift I've found, and in the time with you is everything. 
All you do is make me proud. She sings in a personal love story and makes sense in the context of the period when she's been making decisions solely for herself. Swift described her recent time living in Warsaw romantically. Rambles through the countryside, meeting people, walking dogs, shifting seamlessly back into a type of known yet unknown space that gives her the freedom she craves. She launched a choir named Blue Lights for girls living in Warsaw. It's run by her family and a former music teacher and the girls even feature on the tracks Try and Fit In, adding some gentle O's. Wow, that's so good, bro. That's so cool. You know, I also think, I've always thought to myself, especially in London, I always get depressed when I see people who have dogs in London because it's so fucking like congested here there aren't a lot of great parks people sometimes live in areas where there aren't great parks next to you to take your dog walking around and it always makes me, makes me sad when i see people trying to you know um start families start you know look after pets in a place like london because it's just not the great place to have stuff like that it just doesn't feel like the best place to enjoy those type of things so that's why i would always assume if you lived outside of london or in the country you could have more space to go on hikes um to take your dogs for long walks tire them out take your kids to lovely parks and shit to see you know to be up in nature and shit and only be on their computer and whatever it may be it actually makes some real friends i've noticed that a lot as well with my i don't know if you guys are the same a lot of my friends who were from outside of london they or outside of a major city they actually have actual friends if that makes sense they have friends from school who they still speak to and shit who are still around they still live in the same area they maybe still date or go out with the same person they maybe still live at home like there's something quite really comforting and homely about it whereas the people in london it's super transient this city right it's a big city metropolitan city everyone's coming in and out and shit people are living dying whatever it may be and you lose contact with people very very quickly like relationships and friendships in london are like supercharged a 10-year friendship could be done in like two and a half years if not less so you could go from being best as a friends to not really talking in a space of two years whereas if you're with somebody from outside of london and you're from the Midlands, you can have a little bit more of a grounded, a real relationship, which I fucking love. Which I think I might do in the future. I'm not going to lie. I think in the future, that's something I'm definitely going to consider doing. Um, moving out of London and going to places like a Manchester or something and getting somewhere that, um, you know, getting somewhere that is more value for money, you know? Somewhere bigger where I can have more space. And I, I really, my main dream is to live somewhere where I can actually go for hikes, you know? like that's what i want to do i want to be able to go for a hike in the morning i want to be able to just go to, just like ramble around and stuff nowadays i have to jump on a train i have to jump on my bike ride to somewhere for half an hour 40 minutes and then lock up and then go and walk whereas i just want to live in a place where i can just walk to a fucking nice bit of a forest or a hike or a trail and just have some fun and you know kind of in enjoy the outdoors get can reconnect it back into nature no headphones just fucking you know loving my environment around me and shit which you can't do in london anyway it continues she moved to the capital at 18 living with her aunt and uncle in south london and working as a barista in starbucks until fame caught up with her london's not my home it was great for you know like people to go to uni for three years then they come back i think i should have done that but when i look back everything happens for a reason so i wouldn't change anything rah man she really didn't like london in it fucking hell i really went to do a youth club or something she explained but i haven't been back home for a long time so i felt like i needed to go for a small fun young kids need a space where they can feel safe um having been in one of those girls duh, 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 what's a, i want to hear what shit about moving back home so here it goes um we move on to her changing perspective on fame how it feels to be perceived in the eyes of the public and the pressure that it causes even though smith has remained an independent artist a blight one with a publishing deal with sony i didn't know that she's independent this whole time she must have fucking money um and says she's generally unfazed and uninterested in traditional trappings of celebrity there are some aspects of the industry that upset her people comment on me a lot they comment on what i look like i don't search for things but i'm on tiktok so i see comments they won't be all negative but for example, I put on some weight, which is normal because I'm not a child. Like it's cool, but the world doesn't let you be cool. It's just not, a, it's, that's not me being jaded, but I've definitely been affected by it. That's somewhat true. I think it must be difficult for women in the fucking entertainment industry. You are almost, I wouldn't say fetishized, but you're almost objectified to a weird place when you're like young and hot. And for lack of a better term, like 
fresh, right? I know that's disgusting to hear it, but when you're fresh meat, the industry does kind of put you up on a fucking platform, right? And look at you like, oh my God, she's this new face, 18 years old, bloody blah, 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 cute, young looking, tight body. Da, 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 da. The moment you grow into your adulthood or you come into your womanhood, suddenly it changes, right? And now suddenly you're, you're, being, a bit, you're being dissected a little bit more. Again, the only issue I had with it online was there seemed to be like a refusal to just admit what we saw with our eyes, which is, is what it is. But I think it's just different with women. I don't think you can make passing comments at women. No, you, I don't think you can make a comment, an observational comment about a woman without it being construed as something a little bit more menacing and maybe a little bit more, you know, bad minded and shit. It's just not possible to do so. And I just think, unfortunately, of actually, it's a good thing it's always going to come across messy from men. When men are talking about it, it's always going to come across like you're getting involved in women's business and it sounds gross, which I've never been a fan of and guys getting involved in women's business anyway. So it's probably for the best that everyone's a bit worried about saying certain things and don't want to say certain things, whatever it may be. But again, for the recipient, it must be fucking awful. It continues. Um, it's hard to deal with because no one teaches you about it. You literally get thrown into it and you know you don't know how what to expect. When I was 18, I didn't really care. But now that I'm finding a real pleasure in it and what people think of me that's just something that i think is i'm not gonna lie i think this is i think this is i honestly really do think this is the normal way to react to fame i don't think most people doesn't matter what you look like should be okay with random people adoring you that shouldn't be a normal state of play that's why sometimes i really get a bit put off by these comedians like why are they so addicted to fame like why are they so hungry to be in a limelight it's such a weird um it's such a weird desire regular people don't feel that way and georgia smith is way more talented than most of the comedians that i feature on this fucking live stream she's got more talent in her fucking left pinky than they have in their entire careers right so the fact that she feels a little bit uncomfortable with fame and the attention and the pressures that it brings and she's purposely restricting herself from you know from the from the main stage right moving back home with her family and shit when she could clearly live in a massive house somewhere in london and be enjoying the fucking city girl life here she wants to go back home she wants to be around her own people people that she knows her friends and family her own community that's a normal reaction i feel like to fame regular people don't just enjoy being adored by people like it's not it's not normal you know i think there's a quote in um a foundation she's like a leader or something a cult leader she's like oh you should never worship children it never ends well sad little goddess was you as a child my abilities were misread as godhood a mistake that almost cost my sanity do not worship children it is not good for them and i think this is one of the cases right you should never really worship people celebrities and stuff because it really doesn't end well either for you or for them like it really doesn't it continues here moving home then has become essential for her personal equilibrium um if i hadn't moved back i think i'd be finding the pressures of people's opinions to be too much now i'm back home i have a bit of balance my final question to smith is a big one what would your younger self think of you right now there's a beat that made me sad she says she says after quite a long pause, then she breaks out in sudden laughter. She says she's not crying, but her eyes glisten a little bit. This is a question my therapist would ask, but she probably wouldn't say so much. Does she just in awe? Oh, bless her, man. But yeah, um, I don't know, man. I think there's something very odd about comedians who legitimately enjoy the fucking allure of fame especially the ones who want to be adored they want to be fucking you know worshipped and recognized as great and shit or just as somebody that should be recognized or adored because they have opinions on certain topics it's so bizarre because regular people people like not regular super talented artists like georgia smith are uncomfortable with it right they really they're in a way you think they're built for it because they're good looking and they've got an amazing voice they've got a talent you think they're put on this earth to be nothing but famous and even they recoil from it and they kind of like cringe at it but these stand-up comedians want to be all up in your face every single podcast every single week fucking hell mate but yeah big up georgia smith um again moving back home and being with your family and friends there's no shame in it especially if it's outside of london it's definitely far nicer to live outside of a big city i'm even considering doing it in the future um just to kind of get more space and shit and to have a bit more balance of a life and just feel a little bit more grounded you know